Today I'm going to pull the old PDP-1183 out from underneath the workbench. We're going to replace its failed hard drive and I'll show you how to both physically replace it and how to format it under both RT-11 and RSX-11. It would be hard to overstate just how heavy this machine actually is. I've lifted it once and lived to regret it, so this time I got a little help. Now I just need to take the back plate off the machine and the entire guts should be able to slide straight out the back. It's also still incredibly heavy, but you also have to know exactly how far to slide it, because obviously if you go too far, boom. And so the last few inches, I grab the machine at the back, slide it down, and try not to crush my fingers as I set it on the workbench. Then I'll take the case itself, which is maybe 20 pounds of it, set it down, and I'll pop the cover off of the thing to give me access to the actual hard drive inside. To get at it, first I'll have to carefully lay the machine down on its side, making sure I'm using the side that does not block the fans if I wind up powering it up. And warning, non-masking face coming up. Ah, what are you so angry about, Dave? Anyway, let's have a look inside the machine. And I'll use my handy dandy drill to pull the eight screws out of the plate here that will give me access to the hard drive bays. Did I say there were eight? There's actually nine. Whoops, there we go, nine. And now the plate should come off. Now the old ST225 drive is screwed down to a base plate that slides into the chassis. I'll pull the 34 pin and the smaller ribbon cable off as well as the power, slide the existing drive out, and we'll set it aside, see if we can fix it later. Then I'll pull the new to me but 40 year old drive out of the plastic bag and we'll see if we can get it installed. Of course on the new drive we have to set the jumpers first and I just happen to know that I need pins 15 and 16 for ID1 and pin 3 and 4 for the recovery mode which is the default for the drive. Now I don't want the drive to short out on the chassis while I'm assembling it here so I'll set it on a piece of paper, plug in the uh, ribbon cables, and then we'll add the final power cable and we should be able to power the machine up. At the back of the machine we have a power cable, we have a network cable going to the Cubone, we have a null modem cable going to serial, and a UBI transceiver going to 10 base T. Okay, we'll power it up. Wait a minute, that's not what's supposed to happen, it's supposed to light up, not play music. Turns out the power cable wasn't quite inserted, so we try it again and this time we get the lights and the happiness. I'll give you a few seconds to enjoy the ST506 style drive startup sounds and we'll let it go from there. Now back on the desktop I have two windows. On the right hand side we have the actual PDP-11 console. We can see what's going on there and on the left hand side I have the Cubone console where I can go in and map in virtual drives, control memory and do that kind of thing. I'm going to mount the XXDP diagnostics disk as the boot disk, and I'll get that going on this side, and then we'll boot it on the right hand side on the actual machine. There it goes. Now we'll see the right hand window reboot, and we can keep our eyes on that one from here on in. And as soon as the PDP-11 hardware finishes its memory test, we'll be able to see it boot into the XXDP system, and we'll be able to run the diagnostics package that we need for the hard drive to format it. We're actually going to do the low-level formatting, not the file system formatting. As you can see, there are many, many diagnostic programs already included in this XXDP package. Probably about 600 of them, I think. Well, maybe more than that. Whatever it is, we're looking for zrqch0.bin. So let's run that and see what happens. And it responds to tell us that it's found it and is now loading it, which should just take a few seconds. And once it starts up, we'll type in the command to start. We want to change the hardware. We want to say we're doing one unit. So we'll type in one. Uh, control address is correct. We'll take the defaults for this and for the LBN only question, which I'm not really sure what it's asking. We'll say no to auto format, which will give us a few more options. Like do we want to revector no and bad blocks? I'm going to say yes to that and then we'll start the format. Once the format kicks off, it will take probably three to five minutes. But as you can see right away, this one fails. There's no FCT, or it's not formatted, or it's corrupted. I don't know what the FCT is. File control table? Hard to guess. Either way, I'm going to try it again with some different options, and we'll see if we get any further. This time around, I'm going to say yes to auto format, and we'll see if it gets any further than I did manually. And at this point, it looks like it's going out to ID the drives. It hits the hard drive for a few moments, and then we'll see the floppy lights flash. After that, it will come back and start formatting the actual drive. And with a few seconds of patience back at the desktop, we should eventually see it come back. There it is with the drive ID 821 cylinders, and it's beginning the format. Now you get status about once every minute here, so I will speed this up a bit and we'll let it chew through the format. 
And as we approach the one minute mark, we should get a status message telling us that it is done 27,847 blocks. So it's doing about 25,000 blocks a minute. Not sure how many there are, probably about 70,000 blocks. So this should take roughly three minutes at this rate. And at the two minute mark, it's done 55,693 blocks. So we'll see where it gets to at the three minute mark. Jumping ahead to there, we see 83,539. So my block estimate was a little low. There are more blocks to go. Now it does seem to finish the format, but when it goes to write the file control table or whatever the FCT is, it says it's non-existent and that it has failed the format. Okay, I had to do some more research and after talking to some helpful people on the PDP-11 group of Facebook, I found that there are some other options I need to specify when doing the format manually. So we'll go back in, XXDP, we'll run ZRQCH0, we'll type start, we'll say yes, we'll say that we're doing one unit, controller address is right, We'll do format zero. We don't want to revector it. So we'll say no here. And we'll say no to auto format. And when I kick it off by saying yes here, it will go off, identify the drives, and then ask me follow-up questions. Do we want to use manufacturing bad block information? I'm going to say no. I'm not going to type it in manually. I want to download it from the drive, so I'll say yes here. And I believe I want unit zero here. So we'll pick zero. And do we want to continue if the bad block information is inaccessible? And yes, we do. Now I struggle for a moment here because I didn't read the directions plainly telling me that I need eight digits, but when I eventually figure that out, I enter eight digits and the format begins. This time around, the messages are a little more encouraging. We can see that it's actually formatting tracks, then it's going back and doing a first check pass of writing data to all of those tracks, then reading it back one pass, reading it back probably a second time, or does it write a second time? Let's find out. Give it a second. Okay, second check pass. It's now writing again to the drive. And when it's done writing all of its sectors back out, it will then read them all back in. And this is the third check pass. And at the 10 minute mark, we can see the format is completed. It found four bad blocks. The FCT was not used, which is why it didn't complain about it. But drive zero has been formatted successfully. So with that, we should be able to access the drive from an operating system. So with that, I'm going to reboot the PDP-11. It will come up, it will do its memory test, and if we're lucky, it should this time boot into RT-11 and we'll have a blank drive that we can access. Let's see if the machine will successfully boot. Sure enough, the machine boots RT-11 version 5.5 off of the virtual drive, so let's see if we can find the physical drive. Up in our list, it should be DU, up here at the 172150 controller offset. And with the drive already formatted, we can actually just initialize the drive, which will write the file system structures to it. So I'll type any du0, which is my drive, and I'll say yes. It will then go out and hit the drive for a few seconds. Now it says there's already files on there, which is weird and a bit scary, but I'm pretty sure there are not. And I'm pretty sure I haven't misspecified the drive, so I'm going to say yes. And it comes back right away. And if I do a directory of du0, it goes out, hits the drive, comes back, and reports zero files, zero blocks. 21,532 bytes free. If I do D of DU1, that's my floppy, and it's got a few files on there. So in theory, I should be able to say copy DU1 star dot star to DU0, and if we're lucky, it will copy some files. There we go, it's working away. And a few seconds later, because the files aren't all that big, it should be complete. And it'll copy the second of the two files, the dot sand file, and if we do a directory now of DU0, our two files should show up. Let's see if they do. And sure enough, everything seems to be working. Now for fun and profit, I've booted the machine into RSX 11M. I've then issued three commands. I've allocated DU0 to my console, I've mounted DU0 to the drive, and I'm now running BAD, the program BAD on DU0, which will go through and identify any bad blocks. I don't know if that really does a format behind the scenes, but it takes as long as a full format, so let me jump right ahead. And when it comes back a few minutes later, it tells me there are zero bad blocks. And that's because the controller maps those out behind the scenes, so the file system here on the machine running the operating system doesn't actually see them, they're managed by the controller. And to set up a file system under RSX, we use the any for initialize. We're gonna say any du0, give it a volume label. We'll actually call it st251 to disambiguate it from the virtual drive. What else do I need here? Anything else? Slash VI. Sure enough, volume information. There it goes. All the other options are set and it formats. 
I don't know a great deal about RSX file systems. I know even less about their directory structure, but it does report back that it can store 10,625 files. If we do a DU0, it's not mounted. So we have to probably allocate the drive or unmount it. Dismount DU0, there we go. And with the drive dismounted, we can then deallocate it by typing the DEA command, D, I mean DU0, pardon me. And that should release the drive. And at that point, we should be able to mount it again. And for options, we want pub, over, and vi. We'll let that go, and it's mounted the drive. So we should at this point be able to create a folder on the drive in the normal home directory of 6, 1. Don't ask. I don't know either. That's just how it works. That is my home folder. And then if we do a directory of that, we should also see nothing in it. Let's see what we find. Good. No files, no blocks. Let's do a dir of du4 to see what we've got on the system volume that we might consider copying over to test copying over to our new volume. One of the programs I saw scroll by was Eliza, so let's see if we can copy the required Eliza files from du4 over to du0. Syntax looks reasonable, but nope, that's not right. Now, I'm not sure why this is, but I'll struggle with it for a few minutes here until I figure it out. And I'm slowly narrowing it down to um, a belief that the pip command is the solution to my problems here, so we'll try that. I'll do pip of du0, which is the destination, 61 my home folder equals du4 colon 61 my home folder on that drive, everything called lunar.star. And it's going and doing something, which is encouraging. Now let's take a directory of my du6 comma 1 and see what's in there. Sure enough, there's all the lunar lander files. So everything's working under RT11 and RSX11. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. If you enjoyed this kind of nonsense, please consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on the video. In the meantime and in between time, I will see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. Do it, Glenn! Do it, do it!